The Black Death killed around one-third or 25 million people in Europe during the 1300s. This is a staggering number, which is why the bubonic plague was once the most feared disease in the world. The crazy thing is that the bubonic plague is still around today. Approximately 7 people are infected with the Black Death every year in the US, and it gets worse. People in parts of the world without access to medical supplies are getting sick and dying from the bacteria that causes the bubonic plague as you watch this video. But where did the Black Death actually come from? This is a mystery that scientists have been trying to solve for centuries. Now, an interdisciplinary team of researchers from the Max Planck Institute in Germany has tracked down what's likely the origin of the Black Death, and their conclusion might shock you. The bubonic plague is created by a bacteria called Yersinia pestis. It's a nasty microbe that most often gets into a body via a flea bite and immediately seeks out the lymph nodes where it wreaks all types of havoc. Originally, people thought the bubonic plague was caused by rodents such as rats, but it wasn't the rodents themselves that infected the people, it was the fleas that hid within the hair that were to blame. When a flea carrying the Yersinia pestis bacteria bites a human, the bacteria gets into the bloodstream where it's carried throughout the body. The bacteria has a defense mechanism that allows it to fight off white blood cells, so it can continue on to a lymph node without being destroyed. It's here that the bacteria begins to reproduce. The incubation period in the disease is somewhere between 2-8 to eight days, at which point the bacteria have multiplied to dangerous levels, and the body's lymph nodes begin to swell into painful buboes. This is where the bubonic plague derives its name. The lymph nodes swell as a result of the bacteria multiplying uncontrollably and hijacking the body for their own purposes. The infection begins to spread throughout the body, which results in the host becoming incredibly sick. The immune system tries desperately to control the infection, but since the lymph nodes have been compromised, it overreacts. This is actually the main cause of death associated with the bubonic plague. As the bacteria spreads from the lymph nodes into the bloodstream and around to the rest of the body, the immune system kicks into high gear, and the body goes into septic shock. The blood vessels begin to leak fluids, which decrease blood pressure and the amount of nutrients carried to vital parts of the body. Abdominal clotting can develop while main organs begin to fail, which eventually leads to death. The most horrendous part of the Black Death is what happens to the body itself. The lymph nodes swell to incredible sizes. This occurs most often in the armpits, groin, and neck. Normally, they become around the size of a chicken egg as the infected nodes push against the skin. While the lymph nodes swell, the infected person develops a high-grade fever as the immune system desperately tries to do everything it can to kill the bacteria. This nasty disease killed millions of people during the 1300s when the plague began and continues to do so even in the present. So where did it come from and how did the Black Death reach Europe, the Middle East, and North Africa, where it decimated the populations of those regions of the world? Until recently, most researchers believed the bubonic plague originated in China or East Asia. It was thought to have been brought to the West via the Silk Road and trade routes across the continent. However, researchers recently discovered that the bacteria actually originated in Central Asia in what is now Kyrgyzstan. The team believes that they have pinpointed the origin of the bacteria that started the bubonic plague not just to the country but to a specific set of villages. Using archaeological, biological, and chemical evidence, scientists were able to trace the plague causing bacteria back to Lake Isik Kul, located in the northeastern part of Kyrgyzstan. The first clue that led researchers to this discovery was the archaeological evidence from the sites of Karajigach and Barana, which are located in the Lake Isik Kul region. They indicated that an epidemic swept through the local trading community sometime between 1338 and 1339. Based on the analysis of the tombstones found in the area, several of these grave markers stated the cause of death was pestilence or disease. The fact that so many of the area died of an unknown disease right before the bubonic plague pandemic in Europe was a good indicator that the Lake Isikul region might have been the origin of the Black Death. Most scholars believe that the plague in Europe began to take off around 1347. The researchers from the Max Planck Institute explained that the time between the outbreak in Kyrgyzstan and the Black Death in Europe can be accounted for due to the fact that the disease had to evolve into multiple different strains before the pandemic could begin. The bacteria also needed to find a way across the Asian continent to Europe and North Africa. It most likely found this path aboard stowaway rats on trade ships and caravans. One of the most deadly plagues the world has ever seen might have started with a single flea on a single rat traveling west from Kyrgyzstan. Once the rats with infected fleas made it to the Mediterranean, they likely spread their fleas to other rodents, which then carried the infection to the rest of Europe. But this is all just circumstantial evidence and guesswork. The researchers needed more evidence to support their theory. 
Luckily, they found it in the bones of long-dead villagers from the Karajigachin Barana sites in the Lake Isikul region. After the skeletal remains of people at the sites were carefully dug up, they were sent to the lab for further analysis. When biologists sequenced the DNA of each individual, they found something surprising. Human DNA was not the only genetic information stored in the bones. As the sequencing came back, scientists found there were remnants of bacterial DNA as well. The researchers had a hunch that Yersinia pestis might have been responsible for the deaths of the seven individuals they analyzed at the lab, but they couldn't be 100% sure. Then they found the smoking gun, or at least part of it. The bacterial DNA was fragmented. It might have belonged to an early form of Yersinia pestis, but there just wasn't enough information to come to a definitive conclusion. Then the scientists cut a break. As they continued to analyze the bones recovered from the archaeological site, they came across a second bacterial DNA fragment. It had some of the same sequences as the first strand that they found, but also contained fragments that they were missing. The geneticists analyzed the strands together and compared them to Yersinia pestis. The results were shocking. When the two bacterial strands were sequenced, scientists found they belonged to the same type of bacteria. The DNA indicated that the bacteria present was a common ancestor to the strains of Yersinia pestis that eventually evolved and proliferated during the time of the Black Death. The new evidence solidified the theory that the Black Death didn't originate in the Far East but right there in the Lake Isikul region of Kyrgyzstan. The puzzle pieces were falling together. This was the earliest genetic, archaeological, and historical evidence of the bubonic plague ever found. Researchers knew the dates and the cause of death on the tombstones were not enough evidence to definitively prove their theory. But by combining the inscriptions, artifacts, and genetic information recovered from the sites, they could confidently say that the initial strain of Yersinia pestis that later would become the bubonic plague originated in Kyrgyzstan. The researchers made it clear in their final paper that the Lake Isikul region was not where the pandemic itself started or where the bacteria evolved. The strain of Yersinia pestis in Kyrgyzstan is the earliest ever found that can be directly traced to all the different variants that arose during the bubonic plague pandemic of the 1300s. The exact strain that evolved in the Lake Isikul region was not the one that swept through Europe. However, it was most certainly deadly, as was evident by the trail of bodies left behind at the archaeological sites of Karajigach and Barana. Without this strain of Yersinia pestis evolving in the early 1300s, the bubonic plague would likely never have spread throughout Europe, the Middle East, and North Africa. It was the bacteria from Kyrgyzstan that had the ability to hide within fleas and evolve as it was carried across the world. When the bacteria found its way to the more densely populated regions of Europe, it thrived. Like with all pathogens, every time it found a new host and started reproducing, there was a chance it would evolve into something stronger and more deadly. This is exactly what happened. The different strains of Yersinia pestis were able to infect huge numbers of hosts who then carried the illness with them across trade routes and back to their families. Once Yersinia pestis got into the cities and densely packed trading ports of the Mediterranean, there was no stopping it. The bubonic plague spread like wildfire, and since there was no modern medicine in the 1300s and no one had any idea what caused the disease, millions of people perished. Today we have antibiotics that can kill Yersinia pestis and cure anyone who's infected by the bubonic plague. However, not all parts of the world have access to these medications, which means people are still dying from the Black Death even today. Now watch how did the bubonic plague Black Death actually end? Or check out how the plague doctor's mask protected them.